I am talking to Renee Watson from the Curiosity Box, but not just from the Curiosity Box. She is the head of explosions. Tell me about the Curiosity Box. It sounds fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, we think so. It, they're saying the Curiosity Box is really all about making science fascinating and fun for families and for the whole family, really. I think a lot of people have a perception that science is a bit dull and boring and uh, this is all about showing people that actually the science in your everyday life and in the world around us is not only really important to, to kind of understand and to know about but also can be super fun when you do it in the right way. Absolutely and the idea as I see it is that you are aiming to work in schools, deliver science demos and I just have to ask you about your work title as it appears on the website head of explosions what's that all about well i think uh the thing that i love about science is those moments when you see something for the first time and it's really spectacular and it makes you go wow so a lot of the workshops that i do in schools and certainly what we try and pack into the curiosity box are things that are going to make people have those wow moments so a lot of the I, I kind of bring fire, I bring explosions into my demos. Um, obviously, we can't put explosives in a box through the post, but uh, we try and replicate the, that as best we can with things that are safe and fun for families to and, and so what, what sorts of things uh, explode then? Uh, well, one of my favourite workshops is about the science of fireworks. It's chemistry, and it's great for this time of year. Perfect. Uh, but it's all about, you know, how, how do fireworks get colours and sparkles and... I use a lot of fire and kind of explosive materials to do what actually can sometimes look a little bit like a magic trick, but actually it's science. It, it, I mean, there is a magic. There is something magical about fire. I know in, in my work as an actor and I've worked with illusionists and just having things you can hold fire in your hand and it yes. looks amazing when you do that. We've, yeah, I have done that before and it usually that is definitely one of, one of the popular ones. Though it can be risky, especially yes. if you've got young children who um, get into your science kit and swap your uh, your instant combustible kind of cotton. It looks like cotton, and they swap it for a regular cotton ball, which doesn't do the same thing. That's not really. No, that that's, that no, probably great. that probably sort of melts and is horrible. Yes. and smells bad. So, um, so where have you taken the curiosity box? Because it's presumably it's online, but it also you do demos. Yeah, so we do a bit of both. The Curiosity Box is a thing that people can get access to, is available to anyone in the UK. Um, people can go onto our website, which is curiosity-box.com, and they can have a look on the shop or they can buy a subscription. Um, and then I'm at the moment, I'm doing a kind of tour of Oxfordshire schools and trying to set up workshops and schools to just bring a bit more of that excitement into the classroom uh, with, with parents and with teachers and, and, of course, the kids. I think a lot of teachers, um, particularly in primary schools, do not feel that they are specialists in science. It's a core subject. It has to be taught. But it can be quite scary for some people to embark on teaching science. How do you feel that you are able to, to actually teach science? Well, I think... Um, you know, I leave the teaching to the teachers. They're very, very good at what they do. I think the, the kind of part that I see myself playing is really showing teachers and the kids, because kids are really naturally curious, especially at primary school age. They're great at developing their own experiments. But showing people how actually it can be really straightforward, really easy to do something that's relevant to everyday life, that demonstrates some of those scientific concepts that they have to be teaching. And I'm a firm believer that if you are doing something, if you're doing a hands-on activity, then you understand the concepts much better than just reading or, or kind of being told scientific facts. I think it, it's much more meaningful. Absolutely. Uh, you, you learn by doing often. Is it possible for you to do demonstrations and do things in hospitals? Because we've got obviously a huge, in Oxford, the children's wing at the John Radcliffe is a, is a huge hospital with lots of young people in it. Yeah, I, I am in the process of talking to Helen Douglas House at the moment about what I can come and do with them. Uh, and I, I guess I'll use that as a test case. I would love to be able to come and do... I mean, I think really where this comes from is the philosophy that science it belongs to everybody. So everyone deserves the right to have access to it, regardless of where you are in, in the world and in life. 
Um, so I'd love to be able to do it in hospitals. I might have to tone down some of my more explosive <laughs> experiments. I'm not sure that would go down quite so well. Yes. But I, I have lots of things that... Um, you know that do that do just that just show the science in the everyday and not i don't want to labor the point but i love the fact that your team and as you said www.curiosity-box.com the team on there they're all women is that a deliberate thing um well i'm deliberately a woman well no i meant that i meant in terms of the curiosity curiosity box yeah. philosophy not really i i think that it's really important that girls have the opportunity to see themselves as being scientists. I think that's incredibly important, but I don't think that it's necessarily more important than all children being able to have the opportunity to explore and get excited about science. So I think that there's, that I do quite a lot of work around showing people role models of scientists and kind of disrupting our idea of what a scientist looks like, because a lot of people have preconceived conceptions of a scientist being a bit like an Einstein figure whereas actually scientists come in all shapes and sizes. And a lot of, there are a lot of amazing, incredible women, particularly in Oxfordshire, uh, who are incredible scientists. So uh, absolutely. That's a, an important part, I think, of, of showing all children, whether they're girls or boys, should not matter to me. Boys and girls are equally capable of being very successful in science and, and loving it. Definitely, definitely. And as you say, we have in uh, in history, there are some remarkable women who, who uh, have changed the world, in fact, uh, even go down to Ada Lovelace and the uh, start of the, of the computers. Yeah, and a lot of them, I think, have, have for a very long time gone unnoticed. There are lots of women in history, like Mary Anning is a name that most people won't know, but she was the original and the most prolific fossil hunter in history. And she was just a, a regular girl from Lyme Regis who actually was very poor, came from a very poor family, and collected what she called curiosities on the beaches of Lyme Regis. And she discovered the ichthyosaur, which um, until very, very recently was not acknowledged or attributed to her. So. I love the fact that we're getting a much better balance in terms of recognition for the women in history who have made enormous contributions to science. Absolutely, and, and who knows, people who uh, have a look at uh, the Curiosity Box um, or get excited by a workshop that you're, you're running or it's a, a scientific explosion that you create, uh, they could be a, a major scientist of the future, couldn't they? Yeah, and, and not even the distant future. I think kids... Uh, have the have the beauty of being much more uninhibited than adults. So there are lots of children who are tinkering away and inventing things and making little discoveries all the time. We don't need to wait. With something like science, you don't need to wait until you've, you know, done four degrees to finally say you're a scientist. I believe that everyone can be a scientist in their own home, turn their homes into a laboratory and start inventing today. I mean, you never know what you might discover. And I'm sure you're a great example with your own two children. You've got two young children who I, I suspect end up um, having to be the, the trial children for many of your experiments. I don't mean you experiment and on them. <laughs> well, I think as parents are constantly experimenting <laughs> on our children. But, um, but they, they do get kind of used as guinea pigs and testers for a lot of the things that we develop. But at the moment, they're, they're 10 and 8, so they're still at that age where they think that that's pretty cool. So I'm, I'm holding on to that for as long as I possibly can. Oh, fantastic. To be a cool mum. And I, I, I say again, anyone who's got a job title, which is the head of explosions, that's cool But in my book. What... Just remind us how we can get in touch with you and who you want to uh, reach out to. Well, we're really interested in parents and children who are at primary school. I think that's our, that's our real focus at the moment. As I said, they're kind of naturally curious at that age and we want to be able to give them the tools and to nurture that curiosity. So they're the people we're really interested in reaching out to and they can get in touch with us. All of our details are on the website, which is curiosity-box.com. That's wonderful. So much more than just wow. Whoa, wow.